So let's go back to the case of x squared over 0, 1 and try to formalize this process. Let's say I divide the interval 0, 1 into n equal parts. That means each subinterval is going to have length 1 over n. So I have this uh, first interval that goes from 0 to 1 over n, second interval from 1 over n to 2 over n, third from 3 over n, I'm sorry, 2 over n to 3 over n, and so forth. So if I look at um, the same kind of construction I've been doing before, I'm going to start over the interval from 0 to 1 over n with a flat rectangle of area 0. And then at 1 over n, from 1 over n to 2 over n over that interval, I have a rectangle that is inscribed that I will have height 1 over n squared, the value at 1 over n of the function. Between 2 over n and 3 over n, I have below my graph a rectangle that has height 2 over n squared. And then from 3 over n to 4 over n, a rectangle of height 3 over n squared, and so on. So we start this way. All rectangles have one of their sides that has length 1 over n, the side that is on the x-axis. And then the height of the first non-flat rectangle is 1 over n squared, the second 2 over n squared, and so on. And on the interval from k over n to k plus 1 over n, we have again a rectangle inscribed like that, whose height is going to be k over n squared. And we keep going until the last rectangle, uh, whose height is going to be n minus 1 over n squared. So that gives me a formula for the estimate from below. Right? If I add together the areas of all of these rectangles, this is the sum for k varying from 0 to n minus 1 of the areas of these rectangles, where I have one side that is 1 over n, the other side that is k over n squared, where k again varies from 0 to n minus 1. The case k equals 0 corresponds to the flat rectangle at the beginning, and the case k equal n minus 1 corresponds to the very last rectangle, the tallest one of height n minus 1 over n squared. You see that in this sum, that we can rewrite sum of k squared over n cubed, the n cubed at the denominator is independent of the index. So in each term in this sum, I have 1 over n cubed multiplied by something that depends on k, that is going to change when the index in the sum changes. This 1 over n cubed doesn't change, so I can factor it out as a common factor in the sum, and I obtain 1 over n cubed multiplied by the sum for k varying from 0 to n minus 1 of k squared. And the area I'm looking for is greater than this particular sum that depends so now I have an estimate from below for my area, which I call LN, where L stands for left, because uh, you see that when we build these rectangles, each time for the height over a certain interval, we get the value of the function x squared at the left endpoint of the interval. So that's why the L. LN, N stands for the number of equal parts I have divided the interval into. And I have a nice formula in terms of N for this estimate from below. I can look at the estimate from above and that I will call Rn because the construction is to build similar kinds of rectangles but where the height of the rectangle is obtained by evaluating the function at the right endpoint of the interval over which the rectangle stands. And to do that, you see that on the first interval from 0 to 1 over n, this time I evaluate on the right-hand side, so the height is 1 over n squared. And then from 1 over n to 2 over n, the height is going to be 2 over n squared. From 2 over n to 3 over n, the height is going to be 3 over n squared, and so on. So we start with a sum of rectangles that have all one of their sides that is equal to 1 over n. And the second side is the square of 1 over n for the first one, then 2 over n for the second, then 3 over n for the third, and so forth. So my sum starts this way. 
and I keep going until the last rectangle at this time as height 1 or 1 squared so that I could write n over n squared in other words this, um, this total area the green area of course on the picture I didn't draw all the rectangles but you get the idea this is going to give us an area that is bigger than the red area and that can be expressed as the sum for k equal 1 to n of the areas of rectangles that have one side that is 1 over n the other side that is k over n squared multiplying through we get k squared over n cubed and just like for ln the 1 over n cubed doesn't depend on the index k and therefore can be factored out of the sum so we obtain 1 over n cubed multiplied by the sum from 1 to n of k squared and that's an estimate from above so now we have the area that we're looking for that is between these two numbers ln and rn which of course depend on n on the number of rectangles we have obtained if we pass to the limit when n goes to infinity of course a is going to be between the two limits so now we want to calculate these limits to try to see if we can conclude something about a you see that ln and rn are both expressed in terms of in particular the sum of consecutive squares of integers but we have seen in the previous video that the sum of the n first consecutive integers that we square is 1 6 of n times n plus 1 times 2 n plus 1 for this first sum here from 0 to n minus 1 you see that we can replace k equals 0 by k equal 1 at the bottom because if I start with k equals 0 I start with 0 in my sum so it doesn't contribute to the sum the first non-zero term in, is when k is 1 so this is really the sum from 1 to n minus 1 of k square and I can use the formula that is in the uh, red frame um, simply replacing n by n minus 1 because I'm looking at the first n minus 1 the sum of the first n minus 1 square, squares so for ln I obtain this 1 6 of n minus 1 n 2 n minus 1 divided by 6 and then I have this 1 over n cube in front so at the bottom instead of 6 I have 6 n cube on the other side I have exactly the sum of the consecutive squares from 1 to n so this is exactly this 1 6 n n plus 1 2 n plus 1 but that I will have to multiply by 1 over n cube so I get n n plus 1 to n plus 1 over 6 n cube and now we are interested in the limit of this when n goes to infinity what I have here even though it's not written in canonical form is really a polynomial in n over another polynomial in n and we know how to obtain the limits at infinity for these type of things at the top the polynomial is of degree 3 with leading coefficient 2 Right, because uh, if you look at the leading coefficient it's going to be 2n cubed at the bottom you have 6n cubed because we have the same degree the limit at infinity is going to be the quotient of the leading coefficients so 2 over 6 in other words the limit at infinity is 1 third similarly here I have also a quotient of two polynomials in n of degree 3 at the top the leading coefficient is 2 at the bottom the leading coefficient is 6 so the limit is also one third that means that a is between these two limits that are one third on the left and one third on the right and therefore a has to be equal to one third okay so you see that it was quite a bit of work to obtain the area under the graph of y equal x square over the interval 0 1 so now we're going to try to define area under the graph of a continuous function positive continuous function over a closed interval using a similar kind of process and this is what we will do in the next video